Does this seem oddly familiar to you? Do you ever get stuck before you even start? Now what? Then you have come to the right place. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tommy and in today's video I would love to focus on an idea that was suggested to me by Angry Mobs Gaming. Consider this your official shout out. The idea was to make a video with tips on how to start a build and I loved this so so very much that I immediately went into a brainstorming mode and these are the ideas that I came up with. During the video I will be showcasing some of my older builds to demonstrate my points and there will also be an exclusive sneak peek of an upcoming part of mine as well. And now, without any further ado, these are my 5 tips on how to start building a park in the sandbox mode in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Tip number 1. See what you're working with. Whenever I open a new sandbox map and don't have a general idea of what I want to do with it or just have a slight idea but don't know how to start, the first thing that I always do is that I try out every single texture, go through the plants, try different combinations, basically check out what's available. What might be surprising to hear if you haven't gone through all the maps in sandbox yet is that not all textures and plants are always the same across the maps based in the same biome. What I mean is, for example, the Germany map and England map are both temperate maps, yet they have different sand textures and rock textures. And what I don't even need to mention is the Pennsylvania map that boasts orange trees. Arizona and San Diego desert maps don't have the same sand textures. And then there are the Biosyn and Sierra Nevada maps with very unique textures each. By trying out different combinations of what is available to you on a particular map, you might just get the right kick of inspiration that you need. Tip number two, start with a random path design. The time has come for you to further develop some of your skills from school. No, I'm not talking about geography or physics. <laughs> I'm talking about doodling. If you have an entrance point down and don't know what to do next, just choose a random path and doodle. In time, that doodle might start to resemble a shape and that shape might flourish into a design. Some of my favorite parks that I built started as doodles, such as the Germany park that you can see on your screens right now, or the Yosemite and Pennsylvania ones, which were also completely random. If you're not a fan of random doodling and want to keep at least a little sense of organization, start with a square or maybe with some other geometric shape like a circle, rectangle, triangle, pentagon, hexagon, octagon. Yeah, you get it. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you don't need to have a plan, just start and let the design develop on its own and the overall aesthetic gradually uncover itself to you. On the other hand, if you don't like improvising, you can always try my tip number three, and that is come up with a theme. This one tip may prove flexible enough in its interpretation to both the planners and the drifters. If you think of a theme beforehand, you can roughly guess the aesthetics and the direction that you will most probably take. A theme not only lets you think about the kinds of squares and enclosures that you can do, but also allows you to come up with an overall blueprint if you prefer to have one. An example would be my Jurassic Park Atlantis build, where I knew I needed to keep my enclosures confined within concentric circles, which for me personally was a little limiting, I do have to admit, because I love to improvise my layout. However, the theme unified the overall park's aesthetics and I was really satisfied with the end result. But you can always go a little more loose with the theme. For example, with my Jurassic Gardens, I had the overall aesthetics down, but I had no particular plan. I let my imagination run wild with having flowery designs in mind and things just clicked. The same goes for my Jurassic Egypt build, where I was focusing on ancient Egyptian symbols and used decorations that I felt were suitable for such theme, or my upcoming park that I will be premiering after New Year's, the Jurassic Greece, where I specifically used the distinct Greek pattern in my pathways. Tip number four, incorporate nature into your entrances. Something that is often overlooked is how you can combine nature, trees, lakes and rocks and everything into your entrances, entrance areas and squares. 
the easiest thing to do is put a small garden inside of a square and if you put planters all around it you get a bonus enclosure if you put some small dinosaurs inside. Yes, for those of you who need to know this, planters and rocks work wonders as enclosure barriers. I myself have entire parks based on not using almost any fences and for example my Jurassic Egypt Park which uh, has an upcoming park tour this week doesn't have any fence in it at all, like the whole park. You can also create an enclosure around the whole arrival point, as you can see on the screen right now. This is also from my Jurassic Gardens. In this case, we're not putting nature inside of the entrance square, but all around it. But you don't have to limit yourself to these two options, there are many more. You can always put a river through the square, or a huge lake, or have rows of nature incorporated. All it takes is to think, so think outside the box a little bit, nothing is impossible. And if you try and don't like something, you can always delete it. Other than nature, you can also use the monorail to create some nice designs and give your park some height, which is sometimes missing desperately, let's be honest. Speaking of height, it's always nice to use some elevation too. It's all about using the full scope of everything that is available to you. And my final tip number five is use aviaries and lagoons as the initial blueprints. A very easy trick that might not seem like your saving grace at first, but usually proves fruitful in the long run. Lay out your aviaries and lagoons first and then work your way around them with maybe using a few of the previous tips. Before the Biosyn expansion was out, it was only possible to enclose guest sections inside of lagoons, as you can see in my Jurassic Water World Park. Now, with the underground transport system, we can also do it with aviaries, but you're not limited to enclosing your whole space within an aviary. If you start an intricate aviary or lagoon design, and then you're limited in your placement options around them, you need to get creative with the use of the space that's available to you. If you make a challenge out of it, you can really create wonders. Put enclosures next to an aviary or a lagoon border and create some nice guest section around it and it already looks very different. It's all just about pushing yourself and in the end, who knows, you might create something wonderful and I believe you will. <laughs> I do hope that these five tips have ignited some spark in you at least a little bit and maybe woke up the muse that was taking a nap for a while because let's be honest the game has been around for quite some time now and understandably the ideas for what to do in it are slowly but surely running out for each of us myself included i can feel it but while there's still room for experimenting i'll still be here to provide some tips and tricks and maybe share a few ideas so, if you think that you can get inspired some more, please do consider subscribing as there is much more of this coming in the future. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment or share with your friends. And all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tommy. I do hope you have the greatest of the days and I hope I'll see you here next time. But till the next time, bye bye.